Good morning to everyone joining via Zoom. We are going to start with our welcome video and then the service will begin. I will be putting the links in for the bulletin as soon as the service begins.
Pilgrims on this journey, you are welcome here. You are loved. You are beloved. In the fullness of who you are, we are glad you are here with us. In the room, or on the Zoom, or on YouTube later on. Singles, couples, families, new or long time. Sad or joyful, doubtful or convinced, you are welcome here. People of every race, nationality, religious background, educational background, ethnicity, age, gender identity, sexual orientation, marital status, economic status, and physical, mental, or emotional ability, you are welcome and beloved here. We are glad that you are here right now so we may journey together. Just a few announcements today. Today is an intergenerational service with lemonade outside after church for those in person and fellowship time on Zoom. If you would like to say hi to the people on Zoom, there's a computer up in the balcony that you can go up after church to say hello. Um, next week, next Sunday, we begin Sunday school. Classes will be outside after a brief time here at the beginning of worship. Um, youth group meets after church next week too. Um, there is nursery care. Miss Lydia Van Ever is our new nursery care provider here and Mary Matthews helping out as well. So thank you to them. Um, choir practice has begun for the fall on Thursday evenings at 730 in person and on Zoom. Um, Bible study begins this Tuesday at 930 on Zoom with a tour of the Psalms. Um, we have an outdoor hymn sing and a community building night on Zoom coming up. And we have plenty of other ways to volunteer. So talk to us after church or check emails. Please join me in the opening reading of Psalm 133. How very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. Let us continue to the opening prayer. Holy God, how good it is to be together gathered to worship you this day. We bring our full selves before you, joys and sorrows alike. We bring our full selves to this community, ready to bless one another. Amen. So folks, one of the things that we're gonna do this fall is since we are not singing a lot together as a congregation, we're gonna use our bodies in other ways because when we sing, when we sing, that is one way of using our bodies. And when we pray, there are ways that we can use our bodies as well. So there are gonna be two times today when you're gonna be invited to use your body in an act of worship that's a little bit different from what we, what we do sometimes. So we're gonna need everyone to sort of loosen yourself up a little bit. Get ready to move. You're, we're gonna do the Lord's Prayer in an embodied way, and we're gonna invite you, if you would like, to stand up or be in a posture of praise. Be where you can move your arms. And we are gonna do the Lord's Prayer in word and in motion. Now, in my house, we do the Lord's Prayer every night together, but this is gonna be a different kind of practice because sometimes, you go through the words and, you're, and you, just, you just say the words. And you don't think about the meaning of the words that you're saying. So this exercise is about thinking about the meaning of the words that we're saying by using our bodies to pray the Lord's Prayer together. So Sarah and I have been practicing this, and are you ready to do this with us? Get your arms ready. You're mostly gonna need your arms. Okay, all right. Our Creator, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen now y'all did great at that but i think maybe we want to do it one more time <laughs> and if you cannot see me you can move right now to be able to see me or sarah to do this one more time together this will also be a test to see if i've memorized this right okay all right our creator who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen all right now our liturgist isabella is going to lead us in the peace peace be with you and also with you let us share the peace of christ with one another we're going to turn around and use eye contact to share peace with one another. Peace be with you all. Peace be with you. The scripture reading today is from Psalm 130, adapted from the Inclusive Bible. 
Out of the depths I cry to you. God, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my voice, my who cries for mercy. If you kept track of our sins, God, who could stand before you? But with you is forgiveness, and for this we revere you. So I wait for you, God. My soul waits, and in your word I place my trust. My soul belongs to you, God, more than the sentinels long, the, long for the drawn, more than sentinels long for the drawn. Israel, put your hope in God, for with God is abundant love and the fullness of deliverance. God will deliver Israel from all its failings. Thank you, Isabella. And thank you, Dot and Max, for helping us get creative about worship today. Um, I have a, just a couple of real quick things to say this morning. But first, I'm going to invite you all to pray with me. Oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts together be always acceptable in your sight, for you are our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So I have Psalms on the mind today because our Bible study group on Tuesdays is going to be going through many of the Psalms. And these two that Isabella read to us today, Psalm 133 and Psalm 130, these are pilgrimage Psalms, which is pretty cool, right? The psalms for people like us, pilgrims. Pilgrims who are journeying together. In, in the ancient context, these were psalms literally that people would use while they were on their journey to Jerusalem, to a mountain in Jerusalem called Zion, to a place of peace and refuge. And Isabella read about the dew from Hermon falling upon Zion. You know what that means. Those places were 100 miles apart from each other. So what it symbolizes is that people were coming together. And I think of that today as we gather in multiple places and in multiple ways, we are coming together. And that is as precious as the dew from Hermon falling on the mountain of Zion. It is good to be reunited. It is good to be brought home. So I've got just two points today. First, that line from the psalm, how good and pleasant it is when kindred dwell together in unity. We are not alone. We are part of a loving community. We are connected in faith beyond just this congregation. It is precious like dew. It is a blessing to be together as kindred. It is wonderful to be part of a community where everyone is welcome. There's a poem that goes, mine is the church where everyone is welcome. I know it's true because I got through the door. We are a dazzling bouquet of every kind of flower. Jump in the vase. There's always room for more. So that was point one. So you know this is going to be short. Point two, out of the depths we cry to you, O oh God. A colleague of mine about a year ago now said that going through COVID-19 felt like a species-wide trauma for all of humanity. Does that ring true to you? Does this time feel traumatic? You can use your bodies to nod your heads or maybe you know, shake your heads. No, it doesn't feel traumatic at all to you. Does, does that still ring true 18 months in? Some of us this weekend are also recalling the trauma of 9-11. When we go through trauma, there are things that we need to do to heal. And one of them, for most people, is to be part of a community. In this collective trauma, it's even more important to be part of a community, be part of a group that you have claimed and who have claimed you, a group where we have been welcomed in our full selves 
and where we can be honest and let it all out. Shout with joy when we are joyful. Grab the Kleenex when we grieve and are sad and wonder if we are worthy. When we are in community, both ways of being are part of our communal life. Kelly Harmon says, we don't heal in isolation, we heal in community. And that was true all the way back when the Psalms were written. Even when a Psalm was in first person singular, here's our grammar lesson for the day, the Psalms were still meant to be sung in community. This is our story, this is our song. And the psalmist model that we can say anything we need to to God. Now this is really important. If you have wondered if there is a right way to pray, and if you have ever wondered, am I allowed to say this or that to God? The answer is every way that you pray is the right way to pray, and anything you need to say to God is a thing you can say to God, because God loves you all the way through, no matter what. When we cry out from the depths to God, it is not a sign of a lack of faith, actually. It's a holy way of praying. The psalmists model trust in God's compassion. We learn from the Psalms to wait for God. And in Hebrew, that word for wait also means hope. We wait and we hope and we long for God. And sometimes, sometimes we don't feel it. Sometimes we don't feel God's love in that moment. That's when it's even more important to remember the psalmist longing for God. It is okay. It is a normal spiritual moment when we wonder where God is and we cry out in longing. The psalmist says, hold on for God, and we hold on. And that's when the community becomes even more important. We hold on, we sit with one another, we care for one another, we join with people from thousands of years ago and from four feet from us and from across the Zoom screen who are longing for God, praying together knowing that our prayers connect us with our Creator and with each other. We're going to do this in more than words this fall. So you've already seen it. We've done the Lord's Prayer in body. We've done some rhythm work together. We are also going to create an art project together this year, this over the next few weeks, about how we're living through COVID-19. And that work of art is going to be a prayer, a communal prayer of our community, symbols of joy and heartache and blessing and sadness and all of the things that we bear together. So I'm asking you, I'm asking you to contribute something. And you can do that by emailing me a picture, putting something in the mail, dropping something in the box that's right outside the door. But I thought maybe I should show you some of the things that came to my mind. So, there was a certain day in March 2020 when someone who's in this room, who shall not be named, and I were in the same grocery store, and our carts were very, very, very full of paper towels and other paper goods. So this is one of the things that is going to go in our collage, a reminder of those very early days when we did not know if we would have enough paper towels. It's also a reminder of one of the pilgrims who took some of their paper towels and delivered it to someone who had run out in a way that we care for one another. Now, I know this is going to look a little odd, but I am going to put this on the altar. So then, of course, we have to have our masks. This one was one that was made by my sister. We need a bunch of masks because they're going to help us in our art project. And then, speaking of masks, everyone's favorite Christmas decoration from 2020. Can you see it? It's the mask angel. 
Yes, okay. This one's a little worn out. Did a lot of flying last year. And another thing that we did last year is we made care packages. This is one from our Easter care packages, an item that someone in our congregation painted these rocks for everyone who received one of those care packages. Did you get one of these rocks in the mail? Anybody here? Yeah? This one says peace. It's a reminder that we have kept on caring for each other. There was a day when I found out that I could finally go back to visit people in a nursing home. And I got there and they said, now this is how you're going to do it. And I had to wear full PPE, including a face shield. So this is a little bit of a prayer of lament when I have this here, because it was so hard for so long to see people in person. But it's also a prayer of gratitude that we have figured out how to safely be together again. I've got three more. Everybody had a COVID hobby, right? Mine turned out to be painting. So here's my paintbrush. You all can bring something that was from your COVID hobby. It helped to connect me with a wider community because it turned out I wound up painting with a friend of my sister's. And I got so many things in the mail that were signs of love and hope. Did you get something in the mail that was a sign of love and hope at some point? One of our pilgrims wrote, uh, made a, a hand drawn or a, a drawing or a painting every single day, every single day to mail to someone during COVID. And another of our pilgrims found out that I liked butterflies. This is not a hint, I'm not hinting, but sent me a notepad of butterflies, which are a Christian sign of hope. So you can see we're gonna make something together with this out in the narthex. And I have one more, which is a microphone. This was the microphone that we used for like 10 months on Zoom. And for me, this symbolizes a prayer of thanksgiving for science and technology, because what would we have done without our scientists, our first responders, and everyone who had some clue about the science and technology that we were going to need to get through this microphone symbolizes that we stayed together as a community all the way through. Thanks be to God. So what these things all have in common, in addition to COVID-19, is that they symbolize community and resilience. And so we're back to that first idea how good it is when kindred dwell together in unity. Somewhere, somewhere in there is the building up of God's kingdom. Amen. And now it's time for us to pray together. And so I'm going to make sure I have my pen, and then I'm going to write down some prayers, but I'm also going to make sure that we hear from folks in the sanctuary and folks on Zoom. So I am gonna go and check to make sure I have seen everything that has come through in Zoom. Thank you, Jeff. Um, this is where we uh, get a little bit delayed by me catching up with everything because I needed to open this file right here. And here we go. So the prayers that have been lifted up in our Zoom community today 
prayers for the friends of America still trapped in Afghanistan, prayers for continued healing for Mary Kay after surgery, prayers for Keisha and everyone with COVID-19, prayers for our Jewish siblings in the High Holy Days. And what are the prayers that you would lift up today here in the sanctuary? Let us hear from you. What are your prayers today? It's been a while since we've done this, right? It's like practicing a different muscle. Yeah, Jack. Prayers of Thanksgiving and prayers for continued healing for Sam right up there in the balcony after his ACL surgery. Stephanie. <laughs> Happy birthday, Fiona. That's good. Happy birthday to two members of the Zorn family who are here with us today, right? Um, what, one today, actually, right? Happy birthday, Elena. Uh, are there others? That you would lift up. Let us bring all of this before God. Oh God, you are creator our Redeemer, our Sustainer, we come before you with everything that is on our minds and our hearts, knowing that we can say anything to you, O oh God, and knowing that we are in a community of love and care where we can bring our full selves. We pray, O oh God, this day for everyone who is in need of healing, everyone recovering from surgery or facing surgery to come, everyone who has been hospitalized or is in need of special healing and support. We lift up Sam and Mary Kay and Keisha and others that we have said aloud this day. We pray for our world, O oh God. We pray for wise action on climate change. We pray for peace in all places. We pray for the people of Afghanistan and those Americans who are still trapped there. We lift up prayers for every doctor, nurse, therapist, everyone who works in healthcare in this present surge of COVID-19. And we pray for all of our leaders who are working so hard to bring us out of this time. Oh God, hear our prayers, whether they are spoken aloud or held in our hearts. Whisper in our ears your message of love for us all. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. So while we are not passing the plates right now because we're kind of minimizing our movement, we are um, taking a moment at this time in our worship service to bless our offerings and to consider what it means to support a community of faith and the wider church and all of those causes that we are concerned about in the world. So Max is gonna lead us with Dot in an offertory and we give thanks for the abundance of our world 
and that we are able to share with our neighbors. The morning offering will now be celebrated. Let us join in the prayer of dedication, which is in your bulletin. Generous God, you have made rich and poor, powerful and vulnerable alike in your image. Bless the gifts we have gathered today, that we may use them to protect the afflicted and bring greater justice to your world. Amen. Now, as we are approaching the end of our service i want to tell you it is a, a beautiful day to be in fellowship with one another so if you want to be in fellowship with folks on the zoom you can either head up after the benediction and postlude to the balcony or um, you can wave at people over here but the sound is not on okay so just so you know you can wave as you go by if you want and uh, if you would like a delicious cup of cold lemonade that will be outside for you after the postlude. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, and if you need a chair to sit in, grab one um, or wave at someone who is strong of shoulder. Who here is strong of shoulder and would carry a chair for someone? Yeah, okay, good. So you got some folks to ask to carry a chair outside for you for your lemonade time. You know, one of the things that we're gonna be doing during this season is we're gonna be navigating consent, right? When we are outside, some folks will feel comfortable taking their mask off and some folks will not. And so this is an excellent opportunity for us to practice what we should always practice, which is making sure everyone feels comfortable. So as you're getting to know people's comfort levels and it might change from this week to next week, feel free to literally say, are you okay if I have my mask off while we're talking? And if they say no, then put that mask back on and wait for your lemonade for another couple of minutes. Uh, how do you feel about hugging? Some folks are gonna be like, yep, I'm, I'm down for a hug. And some folks are gonna say, not today, that feels risky. So let's be intentional and thoughtful about asking one another, what our comfort levels are today, even outside, even while we're having our lemonade. So 
Here is our word of benediction and blessing as we go. Go forth and welcome all God's children, making the last first and becoming a servant to all. Go forth in God's welcome and love. Amen. Thank you.